Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. Chapter 5, The Fisherman's Tale. In the dim light of dawn, an old and weary fisherman set out to the sea, as was his custom every day. His life was one of hardship, marked by poverty so severe that he barely managed to support his wife and three children. Despite his age and the toll it took on his body, he persisted, driven by necessity and a sliver of hope that each day would bring just enough to keep hunger at bay. On this particular morning, with the first light casting a silver glow over the waters, he cast his net with a prayer for a bountiful cat. But fortune did not favor him at first. His initial throw brought up nothing but the waterlogged carcass of an ass, causing him frustration and despair. His second attempt was no better, hauling in a large basket filled with detritus and rubbish from the sea's depths. The third cast yielded only stones, shells, and clumps of mud, each catch more disheartening than the last. Refusing to yield to despair, he cast his net a fourth and final time, invoking his faith in the predestined. This time, his net seemed unusually heavy. Heaving it with the last of his strength, he discovered it ensnared a heavy yellow pot sealed tightly with lead. Curiosity mingled with hope. He thought perhaps this strange object might change his fortunes. As he broke the seal, dense smoke poured from the pot, swirling and expanding until it formed a towering genie, twice the size of a giant. As soon as he emerged, the genie bellowed, Oh, great king, I will never disobey you again. Yet, his tone quickly darkened as he recognized not a king, but a humble fisherman before him. Perplexed by the genie's initial deference, the fisherman asked, Why do you address me as a king? What do you mean by your words? The genie's response was chilling and direct. I shall grant you one favor for releasing me, the choice of your death. Why should I be killed when I have just freed you? The fisherman demanded, his confusion turning to alarm. The genie then began to recount his tale, his voice echoing with the weight of centuries. I once defied the king of the genii, and for my rebellion, I was sealed within this pot. The seal was enchanted to prevent my escape and cast into the depths of the sea. In my first century of confinement, I vowed to enrich my liberator beyond measure. When a hundred years passed and no one came, my promise turned to offering untold treasures to my savior. Yet another century elapsed without rescue. By the third, my desperation grew and I promised to grant any liberator kingship and three wishes each day. But none freed me. His eyes, a fiery blend of fury and despair, locked onto the fisherman. As centuries wore on, my hope turned to wrath. After two more centuries, I vowed deadly retribution upon my releaser allowing them only the choice of their demise. And so, here you stand, the unfortunate soul to free me. Having listened to the genie's harrowing tale, the fisherman pondered his next move with great care. He needed a strategy, a sliver of hope in the face of such dire threats. With a stroke of ingenuity, he said, before I meet my end, might I satisfy one last curiosity? You are so vast and mighty. How could you possibly fit inside this small vase? The genie, ever proud and eager to demonstrate his power, readily complied. Transforming into a swirling cloud of smoke, he condensed, 
and spiraled back into the vase, his voice echoing from within. Do you believe me now, fisherman? Seizing the moment, the fisherman quickly replaced the lead seal, trapping the genie once more. With the vase secured, he addressed the imprisoned spirit. You intended to end my life without mercy. Now, you shall remain here, and I will cast you back into the sea. I will even place a warning so no fisherman will ever release you again. From within the vase, the genie's pleas became desperate. Release me, and I swear to repay you with riches instead of revenge. But the fisherman, wise from the tales of old and wary of deceit, shook his head. Your promises change with the wind, and I cannot trust one who so quickly turns to murder. No, I will not free you. He then decided to tell the genie a tale of his own to justify his decision the story of the Greek king, and the physician Doban, 